Case two, who wants to take this one? Let's say we're in the axilla or the groin, a fold site. It's, it's crickets. What, what do you guys think? Um, I'll take it. You know, I, I thought this one, this one was challenging. I thought it was sort of a normal skin yeah. um, differential. Um, again, there's some compact orthokeratosis. Right. Um, That's the key right here. If, it, it almost looks like acral skin a little bit, but we know it's not because it's got follicles. Although, admittedly, the side of the hands, you know, you can have hair there and it starts to look acral. But you're right. The, this is a little acanthotic and it's got a thick layer of compact ortho. That is such an important clue. Not only for dermatophyte, but are also for this disease. So, what did you think it was then? Um, or could I, be. I couldn't be sure entirely. There could have been organisms, in, organisms in the stratum corneum. Um, you know, these virtual slides aren't the greatest resolution for like. Yes, exactly. Um, so, what if there if there were, which is what there's some little blue smudgy stuff here, and I'll show you a better picture in a minute. From a different case but what things would you what would you think of if you see some little tiny organisms up here much smaller than dermatophyte or fungus yeah so if they're if they're tiny you think about um about like erythrasma for like um um and if they're larger than like candida um or or dermatophyte um but yeah like you said they are they are so small here that it kind of made me away from um fungal um more into like erythrasma. Yeah, so th th I know that they must be here because this slide is labeled erythrasma and I do see little blue stuff, but even on the best of situations on a nice microscope with a good preparation of slide, erythrasma organisms, Carinibacterium minutissimum, are tiny, tiny, tiny little thread-like blue um, organisms. The key to me is, especially, essentially always, I've never seen erythrasma outside of a, of a fold site like groin or axilla. So when I see groin or axilla with compact ortho, I always look for erythrasma, and in fact, I try to make it a habit anytime I have a biopsy from those sites to look really closely at the stratum corneum to make sure I don't miss erythrasma because especially as you guys know, people with you know a vulvar rash or, or a genital rash that's itchy and irritating, they're miserable, right? They've, they've already tried multiple treatments and failed. They're coming to you and you're, you're the, they're not, you know, most people are not going to be willing to have a vulvar or scrotal biopsy on their first visit, right? They want to try some other stuff before they get a biopsy in the genitals. So I know that when a patient's in that situation, they're unhappy, you're frustrated because you've tried to treat them. And so I try to go the extra mile to find anything treatable if possible. And erythrasma as a bacterial infection that's superficial is actually really easy to treat, right? So it's the one time that even if it's only every once in a while I find it, it's worth that extra effort, just like looking for fungus. I essentially always look for fungus in the groin um, unless I've got some other diagnosis that, that I can put on there or it doesn't make sense. But PAS, I pretty much routinely do in genital skin for rashes, be, unless I see obvious like in sclerosis or something like that. Because again, it's a, it's an easily treatable thing that, that you can solve the problem right away. And otherwise, uh, it's going to be a difficult to treat problem. So this compact ortho, look for candida, look for dermatophyte, look for erythrasma. Here's an example of erythrasma. So again, the compact ortho, sometimes there's a bit of sponge, sometimes a bit of, you know, there's pigment dropout and a little inflammation, but oftentimes, just like that case, the virtual slide, totally devoid of inflammation. And here, you can see it better here. See the little blue wispy guys here? I spent a long time trying to get this picture. This is from my Dermpath Survival Guide textbook, shameless plug there, but also the copyright does belong to the publisher, but they're giving me permission to use them in, in teaching sessions. And here's a closer look. That's what you're looking for. Look how, I mean, I'm zoomed in. This is a 60X high dry uh, view, not as not as high as oil, but higher than um, than the normal high power on a microscope. And, you know, they, yeah, I still have to really zoom it in to get these little threads. They often kind of are little clusters or they run kind of vertically and they are much, much smaller than fungi. Okay. Um, you can usually see them on H&E and they have a blue tint. Although I find that sometimes doing a PAS stain, just the stain itself, even though they don't stain with it, it makes them stand out better because the background turns kind of more pink and pale. And sometimes they stand out better from that. So I found that helpful sometimes too. But that's a nice, really nice example of erythrasma. And again, the compact ortho is the clue.